15 pounds of weed. <laughs> Bill, you usually bring me back up. That's the way this works. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> We're very professional here. <laughs> So how we doing guys? My name's Kevin Israel. I'm going to be your host for this little comedic ride tonight. Do we have any other lawyers in here? Any other lawyers? Awesome. Bill, shut up. It's in our hands now. Who raised their hand? Who, who raised their hand? You, what kind of lawyer are you? Immigration. Oh, immigration. That's good. That's good. You guys are going to be getting a lot of work soon, I have a feeling. Be, yeah. Good for you. You're going to be getting a lot of money. Anyone else? Any other attorneys? No? Well, Oh, okay, I didn't see, you, there, you gotta understand, there's two lasers shooting in my face right now. <laughs> so I'm doing the best I can. What kind of, uh, what kind of law do you practice in? Uh, I'm actually a legal consulting. <laughs> that's, that's bullshit, so are we. <laughs> it's working out wonderfully. Legal consulting. What does that, what does that mean? Um, so we, oh boy. essentially lawyers hire us to... To bill them, that's... Exactly. <laughs> You're just billing somebody who's billing somebody else. <laughs> just lots of billing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Law is a funny thing. It's a, it's a, you know, everybody thinks law is so black and white. I'm from, uh, I'm from New Jersey. And, just, and this is a little insight into how law works. Two weeks ago in New Jersey, a guy got into an accident and he got three tickets. And then they found out he got into the accident because he had a heart attack while he was driving. So the judge dropped two of the tickets, which means he still got a ticket for having a heart attack while driving. He's either the unluckiest man alive, or that cop was the biggest dick ever. I've gotten out of a speeding ticket by telling a cop I had to pee real bad. He had a heart attack. That's the law, folks. That's what we did, and then we decided to do this. So my name is Kevin Israel. I am Jewish. Thank you for that. Okay. Good. Good. A lot of supporters of the Jews I see. Any other, any other Jews in here? No? Okay, good. More Jews than lawyers. That works out well for me. That works out well. Uh, the name actually wasn't originally Israel, interestingly enough. The family name was originally Israelovich, and when my great-grandfather came here right before World War II, and he was filling out the little book at Ellis Island, he decided he wanted to make the name less Jewish. <laughs> so he changed it to Israel. I would imagine right around May of 1948, he looked at the newspaper and was like, shit. <laughs> They're all gonna know. <laughs> Trying to Jew down your name by changing it to Israel is like farting and trying to cover up the smell by crapping your pants. <laughs> it's not gonna work. I actually grew up in a town where I was the only Jewish kid, so I became like the token Jew. And one year in around third grade, the teacher got up to the front of class and was like, class, class, quiet, because she had a microphone. <laughs> and she said, tonight is a very special night. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah, and we're gonna have our little Jewish friend Kevin Israel come up and tell us just a little something about Hanukkah. And I'm in the back of class with my He-Man lunchbox going, Hanukkah? What the hell do I know about Hanukkah? So I figured I'd just make some crap up. So I got up to the front of class and I was like, Hanukkah is a very special holiday to us Jews. It's a celebration of when Santa Claus kicked Hanukkah Harry out of Egypt. <laughs> and for 40 years, the Jews strode across the desert until they came across a burning bush, which told them to go burn every damn Christmas tree out there. And your stockings, and your reindeer, and your Santa Claus. Your holiday's so much better than mine. Eight days of fun in my ass. I got pencils and socks. <laughs> it was real tough, though, because the school was all white. So one year, the teacher got to front of class and was like, class, quiet down. Tonight's the first night of Kwanzaa. And little Kevin Israel's gonna come up and tell something about Kwanzaa. And I was like, but I'm not black. She's like, shut up, it doesn't matter. I get ready next week for Ramadan, I'm saying this shit. It's tough growing up Jewish though, and I'm gonna say this on behalf of the Jews here, to all of you non-Jews, you guys win. Congratulations. You win, you do. Your holidays beat everything we got. Why? Because you're marketing geniuses with your holidays. If something's not fun, you just make some crazy stuff up and sell it. I don't know, Easter's not doing too well, what do you got? What about a rabbit that craps colored eggs? 
And then you guys turn everything into a party. You have to make everything fun. Oh, a baby's born. What are we going to do? We're going to take him to church and dribble a little water on his head and then go have a party. Wee! You know what we do when a baby's born? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you do. Has anybody here ever been to a bris before? It's sick, right? Right? It's sick. Yeah? All the men stand in the back of the room like this. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. And all the women get up front as close as possible going, Cut it. Cut it. And then the rabbi gets up and he always says the same thing. Now, the baby's going to scream a little bit, but it's just because it's cold and wet. What? <laughs> Apparently this guy's never been kicked in the nuts before. Cold and wet. Got a lot of married couples here? Married couples? Round of applause? Yeah? Really excited about being married, huh? <laughs> the sheepish raising of the hand. <laughs> well, if I gotta talk about this, I guess I gotta talk How long have you guys been married? 30. 30. He said that with authority. <laughs> like he's been through the war. 30! Like, give me a damn shot. <laughs> Look at this face. Well, how did he, uh, do you remember how he proposed to you? That's not a good sign. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do remember. How do you do? We're at, we were at a, um, a restaurant. And he basically said, what do you see yourself doing in the next five years? Not you. <laughs> Some are just too easy. That was like... It's almost like I set this up. Could you guys come to every show with me and you say that exactly like that? So did you did you say you? Because that would be the best answer ever. No, no, I didn't actually. That would be Because then you got married and, and then you've been the... doing him for 30 years, I guess. I, don't know. I, I can't, I mean, she said it. I'm just repeating what, well, it sounds very romantic. Congratulations. <laughs> 30 years. Can anybody top 30 years? Anybody top? This is the auction part of the show. Oh, okay. oh well, Bill. See, I don't want to talk to you, though. But how long have you, how long have you guys been married? 42 years. 42 wow. years. Wow. Even after 42 years. That's amazing. So what's the secret of 42 years of marriage? I wasn't talking to you, Bill. I wasn't even looking in your direction. That's the secret. He hasn't shut up the entire time. She never actually said, I do. He was just like, come on. I got some stuff to tell you over the next 42 years. He just beat her with words into submission. My parents have been married for 55 years. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, I appreciate that. They hate each other. I don't think they ever liked each other. My father has become a narcoleptic. He can fall asleep anywhere, anytime, doing anything. He comes home from work, sits down in his chair, and it's just And the sight of my father asleep causes some chemical reaction in my mother's brain that makes her go completely insane. She gets right into his face and starts going, Sid, 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 you're asleep. Sid, 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 you're asleep. Sid, Sid, Sid. I'm like, Mom, holy crap, relax. He's tired. He worked all day. He's taking a nap. She goes, oh, no, because if he's asleep, he's happy. <laughs> That's very sweet, Mom. Mom's crazy. I called up, I had a cold a few weeks ago, so I called my mom. My mom's like, oh, you're not feeling very well? Well, did you take your temperature? I was like, uh, do we do that anymore? I thought that was just a way to find out if a kid was lying. <laughs> Remember that when you were a kid? You were always rooting for 100? I used to hold the thermometer down by the heating vent. My mom would be like, you must be sick. It says you have 137. <laughs> it's but my mom had to be like Dr. Quinn, medicine woman, and do it the most accurate way possible. Uh, it was like prison rape in my house when you got a cold. So I finally went to the doctor, and the doctor's like, well, we should probably take a temperature. I was like, the hell you will. He goes, you know, we can do it orally now. I was like, really? Mom, do you know they can do it orally now? She goes, maybe that's what they say, but it's not nearly as accurate. I was like, you know, Mom, I'm going to take my chances. Nothing needs to be that accurate. There's stuff on a space shuttle that's not that accurate. I do, my love my parents. My mom's crazy. Does anybody here watch uh, soap operas? Any soap opera watchers? Nobody? Bill That's not a soap opera. <laughs> Did you just say Bill Cosby? Wow. New 
new to the country? <laughs> and by the country, I mean Earth? <laughs> no, that's a sitcom, sir. A soap opera. Well, I'm, I'm not even going to have to, now I'm going to have to explain what a soap opera is. Nobody here, no, none of the women, just my mom watches soap operas, apparently. If you've never watched a soap opera, a soap opera is like porn without the sex. It's just people talking and doing ridiculous stuff with no end in sight. And my mom loves these things. And she's been watching the same, for my entire life, she's been watching the same two soap operas. 36 years she's been watching the same. So that's, and that's crazy because I look amazing for my age. But, <laughs> I do. She, uh, but she does. From 12.30 to 2, you can't call my house. Because she's, she, she'll, I'm watching my stories, she says. Like it's like a Shakespearean that she's going through right there. <laughs> she's watching her stories. And she, you, can't, you, you can't call her, you can't anything. My sister went into labor at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Her husband called my mom, my mom didn't answer the phone. She goes, well, the baby will still be there when they're over. <laughs> but I need to find out if Nikki is having Victor's baby. This is very important. But my mom hates when these things get interrupted, and whenever they get interrupted, she calls me to tell me, like, I can do something about it. And she called me one day and goes, you know, I was watching my stories, and he came on. And I was like, who? She goes, the president. I was like, well, it was probably something pretty important he needed to say. She goes, ugh, he was talking about the sequester again. I said, Bob, do you even know what the sequester is? She goes, listen, whatever it is, we can't afford it. <laughs> Well, that's actually true. That actually is what the sequester. She goes, you know what, though? I could solve this whole financial problem. I was like, really, Mom? You could fix the budget? You could balance the budget? She goes, absolutely. We should just get rid of that plane he flies around in. <laughs> that's how you're going to fix the budget, Mom? You're going to get rid of Air Force One? She goes, well, why can't he fly a plane like the rest of us? I was like, oh, because the president's going to get on JetBlue and fly to Tehran? <laughs> Could you imagine that in the Oval Office, the Chief of Staff going up to the President and being like, Sir, we got these ticket on points, we are able to expedite you the way back, you got a layover in Chicago, but we should be able to get in there in 18, 19 hours. <laughs> My boss. Thanks. I always had dogs growing up, any dog owners? Dog owners in here? Yeah? Ma'am, you raised your hand, but you look completely uninterested in talking about your dog. <laughs> oh, you had a dog? Oh, well, that sounds like a very sad story that we don't want to talk about this right now. Does anybody still have a dog that's living? I know that, what do you got? A Bichon? Yeah. Ooh, that's a very chickish dog. What's its name? Lily. Yeah. Well, we can end those questioning right there. Do you carry it around in a purse? Oh, it's not mine, but... Well, then... <laughs> Are my questions unclear? I'm, I'm dumbing them down to be as simple as possible. You're sitting next to the guy that thought the Cosby Show was a soap opera. Which I really think Bill Cosby should do. I think he should redo that show as a soap opera. So it's not whose dog is it? My, my mom's dog was my mom's dog. Well, then it is your dog. You've yeah. got no choice about exactly. that. If you're still living at home, everything is theirs is yours. So uh, do you walk it? Yes. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Does anybody have a, uh, a real dog? Like, uh... Okay. okay. I'm sorry, that thing's a loofah that barks. It's just a really white rat. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm glad he... I'm sure the dog's very happy that he talks about him like that. Like, oh, I'm gonna piss on your pillow tonight. What do you... What do you have? We have a bulljack. A what? A bulljack. That sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> A bulljack? Let me see. Everybody keeps getting mutts and paying a lot for them, and they're just like, "Oh no, this is a designer dog." There was just a really horny bulldog running around one day. I'll take it that that's a bulldog and a Jack Russell. You got it. Look at that! Come on. I should. Wait. That's what you guys applaud for. Not the jokes, but my ability to know dogs. I knew it would come in handy sometime. What's the uh, What's the bulljack's name? Maggie. Maggie? Yeah. See, I don't like it when people name dogs people names. I used to work with a guy who had a golden retriever named Steve. <laughs> and he never told anybody that Steve was a dog. So one day he came to work and he's like, Dude, I woke up this morning and Steve shit all over the house. 
was like, sounds like your roommate has a drinking problem. I don't know what to tell you. Hey, you guys ready for your next comedian?